my name is Sarah Squire, as Scott said. I'm the CEO and janitor of a company I started last year called Engage Identity. It's called Engage Identity because I have an unhealthy obsession with Captain Picard, <laughs> the best captain. I do consulting, training, and software development on identity-based internet protocols like uh, OAuth, and I'm here tonight to tell you how to succeed at being your own boss. So my first piece of advice is to drink with nerds. That's how I got my first client. I was working at the University of Washington in the IT department in a cubicle, and they sent me to a bunch of conferences where I talked to people about projects they're hacking on and problems they're having right now, and I found ways that I could help them out. So ultimately, getting clients is about making friends with people who need help. So once I made those friends, I started my own company, and I started moonlighting. That was just over a year ago. By December, I was working for myself about 20 hours a week on top of my full-time job, and I was getting burned out. So I went to my biggest client, and I asked them to bump up my hours. And they said yes. They would love to. And so I quit my job. <laughs> it was terrifying. But looking back, I realized that my fear was baseless. So I think we all agree that when you invest money, you don't put it all in one place. You diversify your assets. But we have this conception that diversifying your labor is somehow riskier than working a full-time job. So raise your hand if you know someone who's been laid off from a full-time job. Yeah, that is terrifying. So full-time jobs are security theater. You have a consistent income stream, but your income streams are less diverse. Any one of my clients can drop me, and I'll still be OK. So I got over that logical objection to this plan as a possibly very bad life decision. And I still had this feeling that, oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing. My clients are going to leave. I'm going to lose my apartment. It rains a lot in Seattle, and I will be wet and cold. <laughs> and I realized, you know what? Not knowing what I'm doing is a good thing. Smart people like the ones in this room love jumping into the deep end of the pool and learning how to swim. We get bored when we know what we're doing. So I stopped that cycle by starting it. I still think to myself, oh god, I don't know what I'm doing. But now I think, and that's exactly how I want it to be. So I have a slate full of amazing clients. I'm doing the work that I love. But the only place I can work is my apartment. Who knows where this is going? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am not the kind of person who can work from home. I would go feral and stop speaking English. It's not pretty. I need to be around people who can smell me. And there's no way yet to add smell to a git commit message. I need a schedule. I need a way to separate work life from home life. So I joined a co-working space. This is Coterie Work Lounge on 4th and Union. Yes, it has an actual lounge in it. That's my friend Jessie at the end of the bar with the pink hair. She's a Python developer. This is Armin, our bartender. So I can still drink with nerds, but now I do it at work. <laughs> I love this place. I love coming here every day. I love bouncing ideas off of people and making new friends. And it's not that expensive, which brings me to my next piece of advice. Don't be afraid to talk about money. You have to ask for what you're worth and be willing to walk away from clients who won't give it to you. Don't be shy <laughs> about asking people who do what you do how much they charge. Don't be afraid to ask your clients what their budget is and work out a way to get their project done and your rent paid. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you that actually making enough money to pay rent in Seattle is no mean feat, which brings me to the topic of failure. So I made some bad contract decisions when I was first starting out. I made the mistake on one project of saying, yeah, I can build you an API, no problem, flat rate. But what I didn't realize was that when I said build, I meant it's outputting the right things. And when they said build, they meant we can call you 10 times a day and change the spec. <laughs> I had to fire that client when we got to the point where they called me and they said, we need you to put a logo on the back end API that you built. You can't, there's, it's a back end, there's no way, you can't do that. <laughs> My last piece of advice is don't apologize for needing help. Don't say sorry, say thank you. Don't say, oh, I'm really sorry, but I need this report from you tomorrow. Say, I need this report from you tomorrow. Thank you so much for helping me. Don't say sorry, say thank you. Thank you for being a wonderful audience. Yeah.